last week we had two different goals, and this week we have number three and number four. So I'm going to say three. Three. Goal number three in your family is this. You must be able, someone say must. Must. You must be able to communicate what is vital to your relationships. If you want to have a good family life, whether your family is older, whether you have little kids, whether we're talking about your brother, your family in other states, if you want, if you want to have a good family relationship, ready, you can't just keep hinting around at what you're mad at. You must be able to communicate yes. things vital to the relationship. Yes. I don't know how we can live our whole life and not get good at this, but it's very possible. Me and my brothers, uh, we're all pastors. We literally speak on behalf of Jesus for a living. You should see our text thread. We are the worst communicators <laughs> in the whole world. I'm like, how do we lead God's people? We can't even figure out how to buy mom a birthday present together. <laughs> it's horrible. You must be able to communicate things that are vital to your relationship. Yeah. Such as this, you must be able to say these words clearly. Ready? I'm struggling, and I think I need your help. If you want to know, when women get upset, they start talking. When men get upset, they get quiet. You must be able to communicate things like, I'm struggling. You got to look at people and say that. Hey, mom. Hey, husband. Hey, daughter. Hey, guess what? Uh, I'm struggling right now. Mm-hmm. And then don't give some whole backstory. Just, I'm struggling. Yes. You got to be able to say things like this. I feel like sin has taken over my life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when people get caught up in sin and it begins to take over, you have no one to help you. And the reason you have no one to help you is you can't communicate to anyone that you need help. When my, when my boys were younger and we were talking about looking at things online and my daughter, and be careful what we look at online, we had a deal where it's like every time you see something ungodly or inappropriate, just even if it's the middle of the night, slide your phone under my door. Mm-hmm. Because if you're struggling with sin, slide your phone under the door. And it worked great. It got really weird when they found my phone under their door. <laughs> like, what the heck, Dad? <laughs> hey, I'm trying to stay accountable too. Yeah. <laughs> things like I'm struggling like sin has taken over my life, mm-hmm. just this simple, I need you to pray for me. Yeah. Just simple yeah. one-liners that are critical for relationships. Mm-hmm. If you are married and you cannot tell your spouse, I need, just need you to pray for me. Man, you need to work on that. Come on, someone. Yeah. Let that help yeah. me be a help. Things like this, I'm worried about you. Mm-hmm. My mom will do this. It, my mom will just walk up. And she'll give me that stare and go, I'm worried about you. Mm-hmm. You got to be able to say things like, I want you to be in heaven with me. Yeah. If you don't think someone's going to heaven, if you see sin overcoming their life, you need to say, you know what? I just want to tell you, I want to make sure you go to heaven. It's for all eternity. I don't want you to go to hell. I want you to go to heaven, and that's important to me. Yeah. Things like, um, I, I want to build or rebuild our relationship. We usually don't communicate what we want. We usually communicate what we're mad at. We usually don't say what we want. We always say what we're mad at. For example, instead of saying, I'd really like quality time with you, we say, why are you spending so much time with... (laughs) We don't know how to just say what we want. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, hey, I really would like more quality time. You're my brother and you live two states away. I'd really like more quality time. We say things like, why are you spending so much time with so-and-so? Or you begin to degrade the people they're hanging out with. Instead of saying, I love you and I'm worried about your soul, we say things like, I can't stand your low-life friends. Come on, somebody. I know you're acting holy, but it might have come out of your some of your mouth. (laughs) Or we say things like, I don't like the way you're acting lately. We always, it's like, we always say what we're mad about, but we don't say what we want. Yeah. If you're going to do a good job of building relationships in your family, you've got to be able to humbly say what you want. Yeah. Here's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14, 15, 4, 15. It says, we speak truth. Some say truth. truth. If it's real in your life, then you should say it. But we do it in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. Proverbs 12, 18, it says, 
There is one whose rash words are like sword thrust. Just because you're talking doesn't mean you're communicating. Just because you're, for all of us that hold it in, where's all my holding in people? Your stomach hurts right now. <laughs> you feel like you're holding your breath the whole, your whole life. For those of you that are holding it in, it says some people's words are rash, like sword thrust. If you're just waiting and then unloading on people, you're not communicating, you're driving people away from you. But it says, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. You've got to be able to communicate. I know, you're, I know you may be insecure. I know you might have a story of why you can't because they don't listen. But stop all your stories and start communicating. Even if the other person isn't receptive to it, can I get an amen? amen? Stop overthinking the process that if I tell them, they won't respond the way I want them to and I'll be disappointed. No, when you begin to communicate, you put it out of your heart, out of your mouth, into their ears, and even if they don't get it right the first day or the first time, you begin to build your half of the bridge so they know, even if it's two months later, where to meet you. Can I get an amen? amen. Why do you guys think communicating is so hard? Why is it so hard? What did we do? How do you guys communicate? Who wants to go? Uh, no, <laughs> I was waiting for the laugh. I was, you guys said, who's going to go? I'm like, I'll go. Sorry, it's called comedic timing, but not, everyone, not everyone's with it. It's okay. It's okay. You all learn. Um, uh, pride. Pride is number one. If pride gets in the way of you communicating with your family, it's going to be a very hard road for you. Um, I know, I said, we kind of touched on this last week with uh, more so for guys, but I think girls do it too. Um, I think. I, I think they do that. I don't know. You can tell me. Uh, but I know for... When you let pride get in the way of communicating with your family what's going on with you, they don't have any way of helping you. They have no way of – you're shutting the door before they even have a chance to open it. Does that make sense? So if you go into – you know, when we were growing up, if I had something I was going through and I was, like, kind of embarrassed by it, I was like, man, I should be better than this. I shouldn't be doing this. But it was so embarrassing to talk to my family about it. But at the same time, I had to drop my pride to be like, hey, at the end of the day, they're the only people that can help me with this. If they don't know what's going on with me, I don't know who who will. Who am I gonna? I'm not gonna open up to my friends. Yeah. Am I gonna open up to them? Who are you gonna open up to? Your family. So, uh, don't let your pride get in the way. Um, I think the goal of communicating with each other is to it's building unity, and also it's laying a foundation for the rest of your life. If you start communicating now, especially if you're a father or a mom and your kids are young, you're building a foundation so the rest of their life they're so open and they're they're comfortable yes. communicating with you, letting them know what's going on with you. Uh, even if you're you have adult children, even if you're the kid yourself and you want to you know open up to your parents a little more, just start now. Start today. Start communicating with your parents uh, and your family because at the end of the day, they're the only people that can help you. And we talked about it last week too. But these people will be here the rest of your life. Your family will be here till you die. So open up to them and also don't shut that door before you allow them to open it. Let give them the chance to open that door. Uh, your family's always going to be there. And I think too we get in our heads a lot. And going back to pride, we think. I know for me, I always thought, especially this might be a PK thing a little bit. I never did the PK stereotypes. I never thought they were real. But, you know, I think a big part of it was I was always embarrassed because I came from such an amazing family. When I wouldn't mess around with my friends or I was doing something stupid, I'd go home and I'm like, man, I just come from an amazing, perfect family. And they have stuff too, but, you know, it was, it was shameful. And it was something I carried for a long time. Uh, but I had to drop my pride and be like, hey, they're the only people that can help me with this. Um, I'm going to know them for the rest of my life. I want them to know. And, uh, and it built unity between us, and it laid a foundation. I, you know, when we were teenagers doing that kind of stuff, it laid a foundation. So now at 24, and, and at all of our ages now, I was going to say other ages, but I might have forgot. Uh, you know, at all of our ages now, we're, we're so open with each other all the time. Me and Tay will go get coffee, and it doesn't take a couple cents for me to open up about what's going on with me and, and her to do the same. So we laid that foundation early, and we just don't let pride get in the way between family. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and you can do that. Uh, like, for me, I never really trusted friends a lot. Like, I, I open up to my friends now, but, like, you always had that thing where, like, man, they're going to, like, you know, leave me. They're not going to want to like me no more for blah, blah, blah if I open up. Especially for guys, you're like, man, he's going to think I'm sensitive. I'm not going to talk to him about this. <laughs> you know, I want to be a man. I don't want to talk and cry about this. But at the same time, with your family, you can drop all that. Uh, 
And you can with certain friends, too. I'm not saying you can't, but, you know, today we're talking about family. And with family, you can drop all that. You can leave that at the door. You can leave all that pride. You can leave all the stuff, all the walls you put up that nobody asked you to put up. Your family never said, hey, don't bring that up to me. They're always going to be there and always going to be open yeah. um, to listen and talk with you. So, yeah. And I think, too, how unified your family is is based on how clearly you communicate with each other. Yes. So I can tell, like, I'm not like a monk or anything. I can't tell. I can't look at you and be like, hey, I know how good you're doing in life. But at the same time, I think we can all say, I know how unified your family is, just how you guys talk to each other, how you talk, how you communicate, um, the way you guys live, the way you guys are with each other, even in public. So anyway, yeah, just let your pride go. Leave it at the door. Don't let them get in the way of family. Um, like we said last week, these are the only people you'll know forever, and they're the only people that want to help you, really. Yeah. You can have people in church that want to help you, but let your family be those people. Build that, build that foundation. Build that kind of uh, – build that unity within your family. So, yeah. I think another thing that keeps us from communicating to one another in a family, but I think in every relationship, is that I think we expect them to know without us communicating. And I think uh, women, we, we are <laughs> – we do this a lot, and I can tell you, well, I, I know because, you know, I, 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 we, we expect them to understand. I came in huffing and puffing. Obviously, I'm not in a good mood, <laughs> right? I was up all night. I cooked and cleaned every single night this week. I'm tired, right? And we expect our spouse, we expect our family to know this. We expect our in-laws to know. We expect our mom to know, our dad to know. We expect our siblings to know what we're going through. And that, I'm telling you, especially as a woman who grew up in a house of all men, I was the only girl, they don't know. I'm telling you, <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. You can huff and puff all you want. You have to clearly communicate. They kind of know, kind of know. But as, as women especially, but I think men do this as well, but as women especially, I think it's important that we, we really get good at communicating and clearly and not just expecting our spouse or our parents or our in-laws or our family, whatever your family situation looks like, to know, not even your kids, you know. There were so many times uh, my dad would tell us, hey, kids, I, you know, I'm sorry if I'm a little short today. I was, you know, up late last night. And that clear communication set up the whole day. Instead of just expecting for us to just read his mind and know, um, you know, that clear communication. And I think also, too, I think clear communication is very preventative in the sense of, like, I wonder how many conflicts, how many arguments could just be, just wouldn't even happen if we would have just started off saying, I'm tired. Honestly, most of our arguments come out because we're tired or we're going through something. And instead of just clearly communicating that, um, we go through all the emotions of you don't know me and you're not listening. But we're not really clearly communicating. So I think one of the, one of the enemies of clear communication and enemies of good relationships with our, within our family is expectation, is expecting them to know where I'm at, know what I'm going through, know what my workday was like, know how much sleep I got this week, know everything that I had to do. And it's really important, I have found, um, and I, I really believe it's a game changer for any relationship when you just start communicating, clearly communicating. And before you get deep into your emotions, just state what's going on, right? So before you're all upset and you're, you're crying in the room and you have a breakdown, just, I'm tired today, I'm going through this, I was up late last night, I'm sorry. And I think that that, that clear communication is, is so important. And I think being preventative about it is, is the game changer. It's the game changer. I think it's funny when people don't say anything and then when they finally argue, it's like three hours long because they have like all this stuff to say. And it's like if we would just let, just clearly communicate throughout the day with our family members, uh, it, would, it would be a really big game changer. And I think also as Christians, as believers, being preventative in our communication also exposes the enemy and how he would like to come in and divide our family. 
ex it, it exposes the enemy saying, I notice, I know that if I don't clearly communicate this, uh, I'm, I'm opening the door for the enemy to come in and cause some division to get me mad, to get me hurt, to get me resentful. And, and so it, it does, sometimes it's easier just to be mad. But, uh, and sometimes it's harder to like hold back your emotions and just clearly communicate. But that is a game changer. I have found that in my, in our family relationships, it is such, it's, it, it really changes things when we're clearly communicating and we're, we're doing it preventatively. Uh, yeah, that was excellent, baby. And when you, when you communicate well, you can get grace from people. Yeah. Pride always pushes people away. Mm -hmm. Humility always draws people to you. Mm -hmm. If you went to your family, whatever your family structure looks like, and you went, I'm having some horrible days. I'm having some thoughts that are evil. And man, I need your help. Mm -hmm. How many of if you said that with humility, you know what that does? Well, we're not going to let that happen. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to pray. You Literally, how you communicate can draw help to you, yeah. or you could push it away from you. Mm. Through, through years of counseling and years of parenting, you will be in like a three-hour conversation, and it's you're, you're listening to all these words, all these what I don't like, what I don't want, all of this, and then finally, usually two to three hours later, someone will go, I'm just tired of the way I'm living. And you can feel it. That's it. Finally, we got the truth. Yeah. After three hours of what I'm mad about, and when you share the truth in love, you begin to draw people to you. If you've ever wondered why no one is there for you, maybe no one is there for you because you won't let no one be there for you. Mm -hmm. When you communicate, I'm in trouble, and you do it humbly, you're going to draw, it's going to give you grace. When I would come downstairs and tell the kids, hey, yo, man, I've been dealing with a lot at work, and, and it's not your fault. I'm not putting it on you. You keep being who you are. Have a great day. But if I seem a little weird, I'm working on that. You know what I just did? I let them know where I was at. I immediately got grace from them. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, someone's making my food. Can I get a good amen? <laughs> I'm getting a, are you okay, Dad? We love you, Dad. And guess what else is not happening? They're not sensing something's wrong with me, and listen to this one, and walking around the house with anxiety and fear, worried that they don't know. Yeah. When you don't tell your family what's going on, you're going to make them guess. And when you people don't have, when they don't know what's wrong, confusion happens, the enemy comes in. How many has ever thought you knew why someone was upset? And you drew your own conclusions negatively, like, they're not. are you not talking to me because of last night? Because if, if all I do is drop you off at the curb and don't walk you up, why is that a big deal? You've been walking up all your life. If you expect me, you think I'm, I, I know we're dating, but I ain't going to do that the rest of my life. There's no way. If that's why you're, and you go down this whole other tangent, now you're offended. Yeah. Watch this. They're hurt and you're offended. And there's no one left in the house to help and pray and encourage. So great communication brings a lot of assistance. Um, I know I, I told a few people last week, it kind of seems like I'm just bragging about my dad, though, like we're all just bragging about him. But if you would, well, you wouldn't mind, we just kind of brag on him because he was a, probably one of the best parents ever. He was a single dad and a pastor on top of all that. So um, one of the things that, I look back and I'm thankful for is that it was always clearly communicated to me who we were going to be, what kind of person I was going to become, what kind of man I was going to be for Taylor, what kind of woman she was going to be, wife, mom. And I think what we talked about, the, the enemy of goals is expectation. So just expecting my kids to just become great because I want them to but never clearly communicating, this is who you are. This is who God has called you to be. And even in the times where he would push me in things, push me in areas that I didn't want to be pushed, when he would have me do things that I didn't want to do, I knew that he was doing it because he knew my future, and he was communicating to me, this is the kind of man you're going to be. This is what it means to be a man of God. This is what it means to be a Christian. This is what it means to be a Nally. And so I think the other thing is making sure that 
we don't set expectations on our kids or on our family and not let them know where the goal is. And it was always clearly communicated to us that these are the kind of people that you are going to grow up to be. And uh, I won't go into the second goal yet because I want to talk about that. But I, I, I know sometimes it just seems like we're just bragging about my dad. But looking back, I have thanked him multiple times for being tough on me for certain areas that maybe he didn't, like we talked about last week, he didn't want to stay up late arguing with us about. But I'm thankful for that now. I'm thankful that he was clear in his leadership of our family. So if you're a single mom, if you're a single dad, if you are parents, if you are leading your family, maybe it's just you and a few people, you can set goals for your family. But then to be able to clearly communicate that and say, this is what I want our family to look like. This is what I want our family to be. And I think sometimes we can get discouraged because expectation always brings disappointment. So we get discouraged, we get disappointed because people aren't living up to what we expected of them instead of clearly communicating, this is what I want my family to look like. This is what I want my kids to become. And all our life, we knew who we were going to be. And uh, I, I don't think it's pride, but knowing we felt like being a Nally was important. And it was always shown to us, being a Nally is important. Uh, my dad, my, my papa, they would always lead us and say, being a Nally, you live like this. You do this. And so now, as adults, we feel that. Uh, it's not just like an expectation that they had on us and we all failed it. Now they're disappointed, but there was a goal. There was a finish line for us. Yeah. There was an end goal for us that we knew, even as kids, what it, what it meant to be a man of God or a woman of God. Awesome, Chad. <laughs> Great. Awesome. And the, the part about being an alley, which is our last name, is you know, my father, my, my grandmother was uh, a preaching machine. She was one of them home preachers. My grandma would speak in tongues and ask God which kind of milk to get. <laughs> what, Lord, 2%? Nope, nope, I don't feel that one. She, my granny was amazing. But my father's side of the family, alcoholism, I mean, a lot of that, it ran through his family. So that was coming our way. The, you know, the Bible says the sins of the father is passed down. What the, some of that just simply means if you grew up in it, you're going to have to break the cycle so don't keep going down to your kids and your family. And my dad made a drastic decision, not just to serve Christ, but to serve him the way you're supposed to in his house. So when I kept telling them, hey, if you're going to be a Nally, you're part of this family, I wanted them to understand the curse that my dad broke. Because sometimes one generation will totally do well, and they won't tell the next generation what we got saved from. Yeah. If I didn't bring up my dad's story, they'd have just thought, well, everyone just grows up in church. No, no, no. Someone, my, my father had to fight. The reason I probably missed, I, I, I'm going to guess I've only missed, I've, I've probably been out of church service, even on vacation. I've, I probably missed 10 Sundays in the last 20 years, probably. I, if I wasn't here, I was preaching somewhere else. The reason I'm like that is not because I, I made up my mind. It's because he made up his mind. Yeah. He raised me that way. So I wanted my kids to know. And wherever you are on this level, whether you're starting it brand new, maybe it's you, maybe you're teenagers and it's you and your sisters and your brothers, Start communicating. Hey, we're going we're gonna to be the papas of our family. We're, we're going to be the ones that we're going to look back and everyone underneath us is going to serve God and we're going to set the example. Yeah. And I didn't want my dad to do all that hard work. And then my kids just think it was some kind of gift. I want them to understand someone fought for that. Yeah. And you've been given a gift. Because how many knows that you look at some families, they look all great and perfect. You look at other families, and you know, you see all this drama. The only difference between the family is not because one's family is better than another. Right. Most of the difference is only because one family had someone to lead and the other ones didn't. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't had leadership, that's not your fault. Mm -hmm. But now that you've heard the word of the Lord and you hear where God is, you can start it for yourself. Can I get a good yes. amen? amen? Why don't you grab the mic and you guys can all answer this one. One of the questions is, what does uh, or probably did your family prayer time look like? Who wants to take that one? Um, w he, when we would pray before we'd go to sleep, he would always have us pray for the next person. 
So we weren't praying for ourselves. We were praying. I was praying for Taylor or for Aaron or for him. And then we would go around like that. And that's something that we've actually implemented into all of our small groups, too, is that we'll say, hey, pray for the person to your right. So we would talk about what's going on, and then we would pray for the person next to us. And I think what that helped us do is that when you pray for someone in something that's going on in their life, it communicates something to you that they need help with this area. And now you're on their team. Yeah. So I'm praying for you to, to get over that. I'm praying for you to have strength in that area. And that was one of the things I loved growing up is that I always knew that my family had my back, not just physically, but spiritually too. They were praying for me. That's good. Your other thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, yeah, we would do that. And I, I think also too, um, we were, you know, my dad would always encourage us that when we were having conflict in the family to pray for our relationship. And that's something that I've, I still do when I feel disconnected to one of my family members or I see, you know, something's going on in one of their life that that even in our own private time uh, when we would, you know, go to bed that we would pray every single night for our family to stay close. Um, and that's another way to that he, he, my dad, communicated to us the importance of us having unity and staying close is we prayed for that. You know, we he would have us pray for that, that we would stay close, that if, you know, if there was ever a fight going on or whatever, that he would say, let's pray together, you know, that God would unify us and help us get over whatever's uh, coming between us. So, yeah, so, and, and those are things that, uh, that aspect of, prayer is stuff that as adults we now do as well you know because we don't all live together so but now as an adult I still pray for my relationship with my family that we would stay unified if you want to create communication too, another great way and like I said this is not just for fathers or kids or mothers if, if you have brothers and sisters out of state yeah. if you want to create communication and some people aren't good at it so you kind of kind of like get pumping out of them like get it out of them, just send them a random text and go, hey, uh, I'm, I'm starting to pray for you every Wednesday at whatever time. Now, tell me what's going on in your life or what you want me to pray about. When uh, Now, if you want to rant, rave, and criticize, and you're going to use this prayer request at Christmas <laughs> to thrash somebody, no one wants to talk to you. Can I get it? <laughs> How do I say this in love? No one wants to talk to you. Okay, You're not trustworthy. But you know what? No one runs from the guy or the girl that's just loving and goes, I care about you. Yeah. For people that rant, rave, and get offended, how dare you? If you're going to do relationships, you have to learn to become stable, not overreactive. We all become overreactive when we're tired. We all become overreactive when we shoved all of our emotions down. And take it on it earlier, sometimes you have to think through what you're going to say. Me and EJ were talking about preaching and, you know, and, and learning how to preach better. What, what God wants to say is usually the easiest part of preaching. For me, the easiest part of sharing God's word, what God wants to say. Mm -hmm. How to say it is usually where it takes all the work. Mm -hmm. How to say it, how to craft statements, how to prayerfully, God, what is you want me to highlight? It's the same in communication. Mm -hmm. And if you're a talker, where's all my talkers at? Where's all my talkers at? For all of us, I'm a talker. For all of us talkers, sometimes we talk so much, they don't listen to us anymore. <laughs> they just hear the same tone and the same page. Da, 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 they don't they don't hear us. So for those of us that are talkers, you have to look for new ways to gain attention. Sometimes I would be matter of fact, I was gonna send Dina a text, a sweet text the other day. Uh, and it's just spoiler alert, I'm gonna send it to you. <laughs> about about her and my son and how I started to write it and she was busy at work and I was like I'm not gonna sit you at work you know why because she'll probably look at it and go okay thumbs up you know hard eyes <laughs> love you I want to wait till I know she's at home and I'm gonna wait till she knows she has time to listen to it yeah. so I can really get my point across if you talk all the time and no one's listening Look for different ways to communicate. There should yeah. be a different message between regular da 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 to something you want that is important. Yeah. 
So maybe you text them. Just thinking about you today. Maybe get, listen, how many of you got an email from your talking brother? That would like freak you out. Like what? All he does is yell at me. If you got an email from brother, hey, I'm thinking. Sometimes you have to think about how to get the message into people's ears. Not just, I said it, and no offense, but for all of my folks that are, I told them what I wanted, and they didn't even respond. If you can say that 30 minutes after you said it, you need to understand people need time mm -hmm. to hear what you're going to say. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the questions is, um, how do we parents with adult children bring them back to God when they have stopped following, even though they were forced to attend church as children? <laughs> I love it. Okay, Let, let's talk about the force to go to church, okay? And, and, and I, actually, our next, we might hit that in the next goal, yeah. too. Um, <clears throat> does anyone force their kids to brush their teeth? Yes. <laughs> Some of you parents are all 50-50. Mm, <laughs> Do you force your kids to go to school? Do you force them to do you force them to do their homework? Ish. <laughs> do you make them do chores? <clears throat> but when it comes to church, we're gonna let them find their own way. No offense. Your eight year old can't even find a way to put his socks in the hamper. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, my 12-year-old, my husband, 59, he still can't. Where's all the ladies at? <laughs> ladies, go home and put a red ring of duct tape on the top of the hamper and, and, and turn everything into a basketball so they can make it a game to shoot. So first of all, uh, <clears throat> parents don't let their kids choose eternity. If you've been told that, I'm not mad at you. Could I get, if I didn't know Jesus and I didn't read the Bible and wasn't raised, I would understand. I just want to make their own choice because it's about God. If you're worried about them getting an F and you're not worried about them going to hell, I'm not mad at you. I'm just telling you it's time to get a better comprehension. Yeah. Yeah. If you're mad about how they're going to make you look, don't you embarrass me. Don't you, I don't want my kids acting crazy. You guys always act crazy. You're always taking pictures of me when I look the worst. If you're worried about being embarrassed, but you're not worried about getting into, just so you know, and, and this is my heart, and I believe this all through scripture, you're never, ever going to find a successful way to serve God that is without a local church. Right. Right. You won't. The Bible, it's all through the Bible. We need pastors, teachers. We need to be together. We need to yeah. encourage. We need to build. Unless, you're, unless you are your own pastor, teacher, prophet, apostle, worship, and, and, and the kickback to this is, well, you can't tell me God. Can't. No, no, I know God loves you everywhere, but God wants to love you at his house. Mm -hmm. Why do you always pray God will bless your house, but you won't even come to his? Mm -hmm. When you run out anyway, that, that we're, it's a panel, so we're not going to preach today. So I said, how do you get your adult parents, um, your adult kids to come back even though they're raised in church? Well, I think what you do is you just begin to paint two pictures. It's clear in scripture. Every time something goes wrong, you begin to go, I'm going to pray for you. But if I'm being honest with you, I think if you'd follow God, you'd have more help in that area. Yeah. Every time you see something tragic happen to their life, you go, you know, we kind of talked about this before. You see how this is happening? Not that when you're Christian, everything's perfect, but I believe some of that's happening because you don't have the protection of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And just begin to draw in love, speak the truth, don't lie to them, in love. There's a difference, be, and not, you know, don't egg people on, but when you begin to create the difference, the reason my life is this way and your life is that way is not because I'm a better person than you. It's because I've asked God to help me. Mm -hmm. So... In other words, sometimes we just want to strangle. How many of you want to kidnap someone and just bring them to heaven? Like, you know what? You ain't going to listen to nothing anyway. I'm pulling up on a Jesus van. I'm throwing you in. Shut up. You're going to heaven. Say the prayer. Say the prayer. <laughs> Open your mouth. Take communion now. <laughs> Baptism. <laughs> right? Keep drawing the comparisons. Not I'm better than you comparisons. Right. And, and you've got to let them feel 
Give them the information, pray the prayers, and then let time work for you. If you're not serving God well, it, will, it won't take more than three months for something horrible to hit you, and it'll overwhelm you. And when that moment comes, it's not a I told you so. It's I think you're dealing with this because. Uh, any other thoughts on that, guys? I was just going to say uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says, start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. So uh, that doesn't just mean that if we start them off in church, they'll stay in church forever. But the seeds are there. Yeah. They know what the truth is. Yeah. They've ex if, if you raise them in church, we can't walk away. We can't. Uh, we know the truth. Our eyes have been open being raised in church. So even though they may be trying to go their own way, it's not for long. It's not forever. Those seeds are in. Those seeds have been sown, and it may take a little longer. But keep praying, keep believing, keep watering those seeds. And I, you know, I'm not a parent, but I know that from a, a kid's point of view that was raised in church. Once you know the truth, you can't go back. It's like the mafia. Yeah. I know too much. If I get out now, I'm in trouble. Here's a really good question. Um, if your family members are continually disrespecting, uh, ignoring, ripping off, and criticizing you, um, do you think there may ever be a time to part with the family? That's, that's, that's a big one. It's a good question, though. So the Bible says we are to be peacemakers, not point makers. A lot of us are dying to make our point. Some of us, want, and biblically we do it, politically we do it, we do it with all the stuff. Not blessed are the point makers. You can make your point and still win no one over. Mm -hmm. A scripture we read says a wise tongue brings healing. A wise tongue, slow to speak, quick to listen, it brings healing. It draws people towards you. It creates community. Great families, great groups, great churches are built because the leaders and the people in that group know how to not get offended, not because we're not offend worthy or not that we have no emotions. It's because we know how to slow down, realize what's going on. So one, I would say we're called, we're called to bring people to repentance. Okay. We're always called to bring people to Christ. Um, the theory that I've come up with that I believe is very biblical and scriptural is everyone is perfect at the right distance. Everyone is beautiful at the right distance. In other words, trying to raise these three to know God, um, um, and, and my parents was the same way. We love everyone. We, we care about everyone. But if me caring about you ruins what I'm trying to do for God, and a lot of us do this in, out, hot, cold. You ever hear the people go, I'm through with you. I'm just, I love you with all my heart. You're my best friends. Two days later, the, sa the same text thread, I'm done with you. I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, don't be those people. Mm -hmm. You're never done with your family, ever. But you may have to wait on them mm -hmm. to earn the trust to come closer to your life. Yeah. So in other words, is there a time to be done with them? No. But there is a time to create distance. If every time Sunday after church you want to come over and make fun of my God and make fun of how dumb we are as church people and why you waste your time, if I see someone else in my family attacking someone else for living for God, I mean, we're not going to throw blows and have the cops be called. Hopefully that ain't going to happen. But you know what we're going to do? We're going to smile away and go, you know what? I love you, but you know what? Until you can respect what I'm trying to do, you're going to have to, uh, you're not, we're not going to have you come over anymore. Well, how, how dare you? We're family. No. And then you, and you, you, someone's got to be the mature one. Because yeah. when they say, how dare you, what, what's your flesh will say? How dare you? How dare you? How are you coming against God? Your hair's going to fall out, I promise you. You <laughs> mess with God, you're going to find you're gonna find fleas places that fleas weren't before. But you mess with Jesus. Okay? So, yeah, there's a time to distance them. There's a time to say, I love you, but if you're going to keep making fun of what I'm doing, I'm not going to give you access to hurt my feelings. You know what else I found? I love people way better when I keep them at a safe distance. If you got my credit card and you're at my house all the time and you're always talking bad about God and the church and why you waste your time, do I blame them or do I blame me for giving someone so much access to me? No, no. I'll see you on Sunday. I'll see you in Thanksgiving. And when I do, I'll be able to love you well. 
when I don't have to defend my kids 24-7 and, and, and then have a conversation after they leave, you know your uncle's crazy, you know he's got warrants. No, I'm teasing. You know your uncle's crazy, <laughs> you know something's wrong with him, don't you listen? No, but I, no doubt, I will definitely keep people at a distance because the Bible says I'm supposed to guard my heart. And if you're in authority, so I'm the pastor over this church, it, whatever you're in authority over, it's your job to guard that place. Yes. So, so I, I hope that helps and makes yes. sense. Anyone else want to speak on that one? No? Is this okay? Yes. Are these questions, wor is this worth your time? Is this yes. decent? Okay, just checking. How do you get your grown son to communicate? Mom, mama, I'm going to talk to Tim today. <laughs> My brother, I'm going to talk to him today, mama. He's a good boy. He just don't know how to use his words yet. <laughs> How do you get your grown son to communicate? I have grown girls, and they open up, but not my sons. Man, that's a great question. Uh, if you're a mama and you're a sweet mama, boys love their mama's heart. You know what? I, I, I would be lying to you if I told you I always served God because of God. Sometimes I serve God because of God. Sometimes I did it because of mama. Because mama would look at me and go, I cannot go to heaven without you. And I'm like, I don't think that's the way it works. But I hear your heart. If you can't get your grown son to talk, you need to probably build a relationship you've never had. So it's going to take you some time. You need to show interest. When all we want to do is extract, I need to extract information, I need to squeeze the sponge. If your whole role with your son is an extractor, or hey, I told you you could talk to me, why don't, it's already separated. You have to rebuild relationships. And you need to know some of this stuff takes time. Does that make sense? So if, if, if one of my kids wasn't talking to me, I don't just go, hey, what the heck, how come you haven't talking to me? I don't do that. You know why? I try to connect with them on how are you doing? Mm -hmm. What's going on? When are we hanging out? You can, when something bothers someone, sooner or later they're going to release it somewhere. Mm -hmm. You just get to decide if it's you or their friends. Mm -hmm. You just get to decide on how relaxed and calm you are. And when someone trusts you with a vital piece of information, so if your son, if your son tells you one thing, if he just shares one thing about his life, you should go, man, I, I'm going to tell you something right now. I absolutely appreciate that you shared that with me. And just so you know, I'm on your team. One of the best things you can do for your family members, we, the devil is always trying to oppose us because he loves division. Let them know you're on their team. I never told my daughter, ain't no way you're getting married. You're going to stay home until you're 85. I don't know. If, I mean, I get, I mean, I, dads do that. I know they're not serious. I never said that to her. You know why? I never wanted to test that theory. <laughs> I told her, you're going to get married. I'm on your team. I can't wait for you to get married. Your old man's going to be your biggest cheerleader. I'll help you pick him out. <laughs> Too far, but I'm just saying. <laughs> when you say, I ask, ask the people in your family what you want. What do you want? Do you want to be happy? Of course I want to be happy. You know what? That's what I want for you, too. No one runs from someone that wants what they want. You want to be, how many want a good marriage? I want a good marriage. Well, if you want a good marriage, and you just begin to connect with them on what they want in life. And when you connect with what they want, and you start building a relationship, now, and now if you have a history of, of going off, and I don't know why, and posting stuff like, I don't know why my family don't talk to me, question mark, question mark. <laughs> if you do that, I know exactly why no one's talking to you. Because no one wants to talk to their family and have to hear it on social media. I get that's your quick release, but you need to slow it down, build a deeper relationship, and, ready, begin to talk to them. I just want to tell you, I want to, yeah. as your mom, I want to say something to you. You know, I struggle. And, and sometimes talk without a clear agenda. You know, your mom's been struggling with some mental health stuff. You know what? Can you just pray for me? Just begin to build, and you'll begin to watch walls fall and vulnerability grow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that okay? All right. We only got time for a couple more. Um, any other thoughts on that, guys? I'd love to hear your thoughts. 
I think we'll probably just get done with this part today. I'll save another one for next week. Okay. Um, clearly communicating. This is probably for you, Tay. How can I communicate? I don't feel well. Uh, I think it's preventatively without appearing to be complaining to my partner and my family. Um, when I well, when I feel off and I communicate uh, for compassion, I seem to hurt those around me. I don't feel well daily, health, mental, uh, and one year sober factors in. If that makes sense. Yeah. You want to hit that one or you want to? Yeah, yeah um, I would just say uh, I, I the pre- clearly communicating, trying to prevent hurting someone trying I think it again is all about how you say it and you know like like I'm like we were talking about earlier you know sometimes it's it's better if there's not so much emotion attached to it because it's better it's people can accept facts but sometimes and and also to make sure it's not coming off in a blaming way you make me or you did this or you did that because I have just noticed especially with clearly communicating to people in my family and learning how to do that. If I if I'm stating a fact of what's going on in me and I'm not putting it on someone else, there's no I all all you get from people who really love you is grace and love and compassion. You know, you won't it's really hard to push back on someone saying they're just having a bad day, you know. And I think I would say maybe just, you know, think about how you're saying it, how you're presenting it, but I would also say too, you know, all you can really do if you are clearly communicating and it's not you feel like it's not making a difference, I would just don't get discouraged. Continue to clearly communicate. After a while, uh, you will begin to you can lead your family in that. After a while, they'll they'll start to say, "Okay, she keeps saying this. You know, they keep saying this. They keep clearly communicating this to me. Why do I keep making it worse? You know." So don't get discouraged in clearly communicating. I think also in family, again, like he said, sometimes we just talk so much. Sometimes we're not like, "Hey, I need you to listen." I am really having a bad day today or I'm not feeling good today. I, I, if you guys could just give me some grace today or, hey, I'm going to, if I seem short or if I seem off, this is why. You know, if, if you're saying that, I would just say don't get discouraged in saying that. After a while, your family will start to see, okay, this is, you know, she's, she's like getting serious. But I would, I, I honestly would say that unless like, like, uh, people usually, usually, if they love you, if you will stop all the madness and all the emotion and just, cl- like, I know you you might be saying it, but stop all the noise and say, hey, everyone, I need to say something, you know, and make sure you have people's attention and you're being vulnerable and honest with them. Um, I think that that's, that, that, that is helpful. And I think also, too, you know, if you're dealing with health issues as well, make that a prayer focus for your whole family. Let, let them in on it. Let's pray. Will you guys be praying for me? Can you lay hands and pray pray for me? Your kids, your spouse, whoever is, whoever is in your home, hey, can you guys be praying for me? I'm going through this. Let it be a, a prayer focus for your family because you going through something, actually God wants to use our struggles to bring us together. And so if you going through something is causing a divide, then we got to reevaluate what, you know, what is that? The enemy is trying to use, maybe, maybe you are, maybe you feel like you're clearly communicating, but maybe people, maybe we need to shut down the noise and be more uh, honest or whatever it is. I think just expose the enemy um, and, and, uh, and be honest, I think, and, and just don't blame don't blame. That never works ever. And I have tried. Like I said, you know, growing up with these these three and I've been married for five years, whenever you put what you're going through on everybody else and it's everybody's issue, immediately they get defensive. Immediately. Anytime you start, you go in for the attack, people are just automatically going to get defensive. So talk for yourself. Don't bring other people into it. And uh, hopefully that will yeah, and, and hopefully that will unify you guys as a family. Yeah, clap it up for that. 
and, and, and sometimes it's really hard, and, and we're almost done. Sometimes it's really, really hard to learn how to communicate when you've never done it. It's like preaching. Sometimes you're like, you feel what God wants to say. And I remember preaching, just feeling so much of God, and I'm studying. And I came out, and it was just like, I, was just, I don't even know what I said. You don't know what I said. Yeah. I was just like, and God's just like, I mean, like, oh, my gosh, boom, pow. Whoa, did you, you I, I'm telling you, it is next level. Yeah. And, yeah. and it was like, I don't know what he's doing, but he seemed like he's having a good time. I don't know what. And sometimes communication is hard because you feel it. Where's all my feelers at? All my emotions. You yeah. feel it, and it's so hard to cut the fat of anger and offense and blame. And some of us, it's just habit forming. Mm-hmm. We, we just attack everyone. I would, but you, mm-hmm. I would tell you, but you never ultimatums don't work in, in ultimatums do not work on the daily if there's an ultimatum all the time think about when not just how you're going to say it but what you're going to say like I, I i used to plan in my brain little truth bombs to drop off i just tuck my kids in pray with them God's got a plan for my life. I'm going to do great things and have repeat it. We repeat a couple of scriptures. I would tell them I love them. And then like some days they'd be in the room. I'd just walk by slowly, look in the room and go, man, you make me so proud. And then just walk away. Drop by with a thank you for being kids that never made me have to call the cops. And just walk away. <laughs> thank you for making it easy. Everything they do good, you better celebrate it. Because if you're tired, no one wants to work towards a relationship that never has any benefits at the end. When you think someone's going to be grouchy forever, they're never, that's when you lose the desire to build a relationship. Mm -hmm. So the celebration, or like if they weren't living right, and I I knew knew some sin was creeping around my family, I'd just walk by and go, aren't you glad that we're saved and we're going to heaven? Mm -hmm. And I'd walk away and they'd be like, I think I am. I mean, uh, so the timing and when to do it. Don't just do it because you feel it. Think about when to say it. And think about when's a good time for them to receive it. Like for people I've discipled in our church or even staff members or even other pastors that I'm their overseer, pastor of their church. I'll always start with, I want to share something with you. Is now a good time? (laughs) How many levels when someone says, I want to talk to you and they won't tell you why? You want to talk to me? Then you get all freaked out about it. Always, hey, I, I you know, and, and then I'll, if I want to correct something, I'll say, hey, uh, so just check it. Am I still your pastor? And that gives them a millisecond to go, yeah, here we go. Well, if I'm your pastor, I just want to point out you need to be careful. But when you just, like when someone's just busy on their way to work and they're running late to work and you call them, I need to talk to you right now. We only got two minutes. And you just, you know, da, 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 and you hang up. They're like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do with that. Not now. Yeah. So think about it. Yeah. Uh, one last question, and then we'll get to the next point next week. Um, how do you communicate with a parent about something they, f- uh, they may be doing wrong respectfully? How do you communicate with a parent that may be doing something wrong well, it's back to that scripture. You have to speak the truth in love. One thing I notice about a lot of teenagers, and maybe these guys, th- you know, our youth pastor now work in the youth ministry, so maybe they want to share with it on it too. But um, w- when you're a teenager and you feel like you're in an unhealthy home or an unhealthy home, you got to remember that you can still love and honor your parents no matter if they're doing the right thing or the wrong thing. Yeah. It never means you can withdraw. Now, the Bible says to honor them in the Lord. So if they say get in the car, we're going to go, you know, we're going to go get a quick payout. <laughs> Don't get in the car. Yeah, yeah. We need to score some money because rent's due tomorrow. Hop in the car and put on the ski mask. You don't got to go. You can say no. <laughs> honor them in the Lord. Always honor people. Always love them. Always honor them. Thanks for being my mom. Don't, don't tear down the love because they're doing the wrong thing. But um, number one is um, be careful how you talk to your parents. I'm and I know, I, don't get me wrong, I, I know that you feel like they deserve it, but screaming at your parents, I've never seen, I've never heard anyone say, Pastor, I have a testimony, what is it? I screamed at my parents like crazy. And you know what? After three years of screaming, they just bowed their knee, accepted Jesus, and took communion right there. Never happened, ever. 
love, when you do things, listen, if you are related, this is the one thing, and I know our emotions and our offenses and our mind is always in the way. If you are family, if you didn't say a word, your heart is going to lean towards family. I always tell people this, and they always like want to fix it, and they fix it wrong, and they ruin it. If you just don't do anything but become welcoming, sooner or later, this year or next, kids are going to want to be by their parents. Even if you've done something horrible, I, don't know, I'm t- I'm t- I feel the Holy Spirit. Someone has done something horrible to their kids, and because you think it's horrible, you think your kids are done with you, so now you're going to double overreact. Does that make sense? Don't double overreact. Smile, wave, ask for forgiveness, tell everyone you're sorry, and just wait. God is always drawing people together. He's always drawing people back. And often when God is drawing family members back, usually the one that prayed to get it back because they're still so offensive as the person comes back they'll usually say something dumb again and then the family member's like well they're still the same they still the same be an airport your whole family can land on just be anytime they want to land just come on come on over to the house okay so for this one um how would you communicate i i think it should be in short spurts Mom, I love you, and I'm worried about you. Is there a mom in here? Uh, all, all the moms, throw your hands in the air, wave them like you just don't care. If your baby said, Mom, I'm worried about you, and I love you, can we talk? How many would say, how dare you? You get away from me right now. You wouldn't. The key in all kingdom relationships is honor. I love you, and I'm worried. What are you worried about? I just, I've seen a couple things lately, and I just, I want to I want to make sure you're good. I know God loves you. I want to see you live. Always project vision. Don't project your opinions. Mm-hmm. I want to see you have a great life, Mom. I want to see you be a grandma to your grandkids someday. I want to see us just getting old. Always project what you want. People will always work with you on the good vision that includes them. People don't go, do good when they're like, Aaron, I'm mad at you, and here's why. Project vision. Mom, I love you. I care about you. I want to have a relationship the rest of our lives. Yeah. And I see a couple of things. I'm worried it's going to ruin it. Mom, can, can, can we find a way to not let this habit ruin what we have? The fighting never, ever works. Is that, is that making sense? Yeah. Yeah. We're kind of running a little late on time, uh, so we're going we're gonna to pray. And if you're okay with it, we'll stretch this to just one more week and hit the last family goal next week if you're okay with that. Now, listen, don't say anything. This is not about us, Don't. but I just want to make sure it's serving you well. Uh, how many would be okay if we just do it one more week? Yeah. Is, is it really beneficial, honestly? Yeah. Okay, I just, and I, I'm not saying that for, I just really, really want to know. Well, do me a favor. Someone jump on the keyboard. If you want to see some change in your family, stand up. And we're going to pray over that right now in Jesus' name. God is a God is a God of restoration. Matter of fact, uh, EJ, grab that mic. I feel like you're gonna help me pray today. Um, I, God is a God of restoration. Can I get an amen? God is always trying to restore people back together. Always. I think when you think you have to do it all yourself, I think that's where we get in trouble because we get frantic. We get nervous. We don't talk with skill or with wisdom. We just frantically try to, because you're trying to do it on your own. I have relationships with people that are distant, and all I can do is build my side of the bridge. All I can do is build my side. There are some people in my life, I love them all. And they're like, are you mad at me? Are you not mad at me? I mean, for me, I don't operate in are you mad or not. I just, that's just not where I live. I don't do the whole I'm mad or not mad. I don't do that. I'm not mad. But I know that I can only build half the bridge. I can only build half the bridge to my son. I cannot build his half. If I build my half with love and with vision, it'll make him want to build his half. Does it make sense? If you think you have to fix this on your own, even if you're the one that messed it up, you are not on your own. God wants to help restore the relationships in your life. 
and you've got to give it time. Stop trying to force it. Let God move on your heart and just stay in position. I don't have to be done with people, ever. I do distance people, absolutely. I mean, if it's messing up my peace and my life and I can't do what God, because I keep letting people in that are always causing, yeah, absolutely, I love you, but I gotta guard my heart. Because, and, and who am I talking to? Someone doesn't guard their heart. I hear the Holy Spirit say there's at least three to five people in this room. You don't, you, you just take hits off, you just let everyone, you're allowed to guard your heart. Because if I don't guard my heart from other people, I'm never gonna have enough heart to still be a good, you're giving your heart to all the wrong people. My responsibilities is my family, my God, and the church. And I'm trying to do that. So if you need to put someone at a distance, you're allowed to go, I still love you, but I built my half of the bridge, and you haven't built yours yet. I love you, but I'm waiting for you to do that. Bow your heads this morning. EJ, um, just a minute, I'm going to have you pray over just the restoration of their families. Father, I pray for every one of us for superior wisdom. God, you are God Almighty with all love, all power, all grace, and you still have distant relationships with all your family because some of us haven't built the bridge to you. So, Father, I pray you know this more than anyone. You are patient, long-suffering. You're amazing. Teach us to be like you. Teach us not to need a quick emotional dopamine hit of they like me and they approve of me. Teach us to be patient and steadfast and use wisdom and begin to build the bridge because time is slipping. We don't want to get older and not have anyone that wants to come to our house because we don't know how to talk to them. God, we're done being right and we always say we're right, but somehow we're always right and nothing ever, everything's wrong. Father, we declare that that is not the way of an almighty God. You are a connector and a restorer of people. If you're in this room right now and you need to you need to do to God what you want your family to do for you and just start reconnecting and once you do it. If you need Jesus, I want you to ask him right now, forgive me for my sins. The same pain I've caused my family and they've caused me, I think I've caused you. I want that relationship to be right. If you need to accept the Lord as your Savior right now, ask him to forgive your sins. No one's looking but me and God. Just lift up your hand and go, I need to ask that right now. I need to rededicate. Lift up your hand if that's you. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for your honesty. If you can put them down, just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, forgive me for all of my sins. I choose you as my Lord and Savior. I die to my old self. I want you to be my new life. I choose you as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me of all my sins. I will follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. So why don't you pray over just all the relationships. If you want that in your families, just lift up your hands towards heaven right now. Lord, we ask right now that you would do a work in our hearts and in our families' hearts. We pray that broken relationships will be mended. Lord, we pray that um, if there is any generational curses that are existing in our family, we thank you that we serve the God who breaks chains, that breaks generational curses. Lord, and that today is a divine appointment that no longer will we live under the generational curse of what our grandfather and our dad and our mom did, but now we will start new. And I, and I believe this, Lord, that even the people who have kids that are grown, family that has gone, we pray that you would start it right now, Jesus. We pray that this would be uh, uh, the start of generational blessings and not cursings. Lord, we pray for every prodigal son and daughter we pray right now that the Holy Spirit would touch their hearts. Lord, we pray that because of the prayers of the saints, the prayers of the family, Lord, that your spirit would reach out and grab them wherever they are at. 
Bring them home, Lord. Bring them home. I pray that you would surround them wherever, at their workplace, in their job, in their life. I pray that you would surround them with people who are going to point them to you. And we believe and we declare right now, every prodigal son and daughter is coming home in the name of Jesus. We pray that every seed that was sown into their life, we pray that everything that they know, that the truth that they know would come alive in them, that the Holy Spirit would start to grip their heart like never before. Lord, and we're already seeing some start to come home. We pray for more. I pray that the sons and daughters of this church would come home, Lord. I pray that they would come home, Lord, and I pray that when they come, we would be waiting with open arms, just like the Father was waiting with open arms for us, Lord. We pray for restoration in families. I pray for restoration in marriages. I pray for restoration in fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. Lord, and not just a nice conversation, complete healing in Jesus' name. We pray that you would do something on the inside of us. Help us to have goals and not expectations. Help us to have vision for our life and for our families. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. I, while he was praying, I heard the Holy Spirit tell me, he's hurting, he's healing your family hurt right now. Lift up your hands if that's you. You got family hurt. You walk around, you carry it. You're looking for the blame. Is it me? Is it them? God's healing that family hurt. I hear the Holy Spirit say, I'm wiping away the pain. I'm wiping away the pain so new planes can land on the airport. It's almost like the hurt, they couldn't land if they wanted to because you're so hurt you wouldn't know how to receive them. The Lord says, I'm healing your family hurt. Whether you've caused it or whether they've caused it in your heart. And, and I, I felt, should I do an altar call, Lord? Should I have, I feel like the Lord said, I'm just going to do a quick work. I'm just going to release it from the pain right now. All the, So just, just as the Lord is saying it, just say, I'll take it. I'll release it. I give you my pain. I give you the offense. Who left me? Who should have did something that didn't? I just release it right now. I'm setting up for this next season of my life. And family planes are going to begin to land at this airport. And I'm going to begin to receive them. Heal our pain, oh God. And everyone said a big amen. 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 Come on, clap it up if you're grateful.